and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. My name is Ali and this is my podcast to talk about knitting and crochet and all the crafty good stuff. I live in Kent in the UK with my husband and my two young daughters. Oh, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Ali. Uh, this is going to be a super quick episode in the sense that it, I mean, it might not be 20 minutes long it was probably going to be a bit longer than that <laughs> but um, I'm going to try and zoom through it I've given myself an hour to film this because if I don't do it today I don't think I'm going to get a podcast out at all uh, yeah this month so we're going our way um, over the Easter holidays uh, to Cornwall so I'm going to be taking some little vloggy footage whilst we're there and I'll be back after that um, with a proper less hurried podcast so I'm not um, I, I haven't planned at all I've just literally run around the house um, uh, in the midst of all my packing grabbed everything I could see written down some podcast categories on bits of paper and um, I can't actually even remember if I brushed my hair so hopefully I'm not looking too frazzled I didn't change my top I was gonna put on a nice flowery top but you're just gonna have to put up with me in my t-shirt but I've written down my usual podcast categories um, or a selection of podcast categories on some paper and I'm just going to pick the categories out and talk about those things in that order which I'm hoping might concentrate my mind and stop me going off piste too much and then uh, the timestamps for all of the things that I'm going to talk about will be underneath this podcast along with the show notes so fingers crossed we'll get through this and um, it won't be that uh, it will be interesting enough even though I'm going to be going quickly also my lips feel funny because I've just put this stuff on it <laughs> I don't think this is too rude to show it's not any rude words but it's implied but I've just uh, I've just put some of this on my lips because I I thought it was just um, um, lip gloss, but it's obviously doing something. It's tingling. It's making my lips feel all weird. Ah. Anyway, it tastes nice. So let's pick from our first thing. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to start, which we normally end with ramble so the ra when I say ramble these are just the odds and ends that I wanted to talk about aside from the usual finished objects works in progress etc so I've written a little list I just wanted to let you all know that um I do have a Ravelry group a Ravla a Ravelry group for this podcast um it's called the little drops are wonderful <laughs> um I think it, yeah just little drops are wonderful um in the groups on Ravelry. I'm absolutely rubbish at it. I'm really sorry. There's some lovely, lovely chatty people in there um, and it was a really lo lovely and lively, especially over the Strictly Sock Along. But I'm just, I am hopeless at keeping up with um, forums, but I do go in and read everything. I do go in and press the, the love button and I try to reply when I get a chance. Um, but I've popped a little extra thread in there, um, the Ask Me Anything thread. Uh, I always find that quite interesting when I see other podcasters answering questions from those kind of threads. So I thought I'd stick one in my group too. So if you want to ask me anything, I can't promise I'll answer the, if, <laughs> the most personal of things. But if you've got anything you would like to ask, I uh, pop it in there and I will attempt to answer those on the podcast. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, I, I'm a bit sporadic in my podcasting just because um, I've got a lot of stuff going on in my personal life at the moment. It's nothing um, that I'm secretive about. My father is very unwell. Um, I was very ill, literally. I lost February to being ill, uh, just with all kinds of, uh, I had a chest infection and all kinds of illnesses. It's just been really unfortunate. But I'm a lot better now and feeling good and uh, yeah, ready for the Easter holidays, but also feeling sad and worried because um, my dad is, is really not well. He's back in hospital um, and he was supposed to be coming on holiday with us and now it, um, he won't be. So that is uh, what's been going on and it does, um, I drive a lot. My dad lives just over 90 miles away. So I, I drive once a week up or twice a week sometimes up to sea him and visit him um, and with work and the kids and the school run and everything like that it all tends to build up so if I'm a bit sporadic that's why 
Um, but I am on Instagram. I always post on there, um, usually once a day, if not um, more, if I haven't posted in a few days. So do try and keep up with me. That would be lovely to say hello to you over there. Uh, um, yeah, I told you this would be the rambling bit. Lastly, not a, uh, a, a ramble, but a uh, extra piece of news. Um, I, uh, Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast, contacted me recently to ask if I would like to co-host with her a make-along for dodgy bags. So if you've been watching my podcast for a while or following me on Instagram, you will know that I am a very, very amateur sewist and I like to make little project bags for myself or to give away as gifts or in swaps or as prizes. I'm not a very good at sewing, I just wing it, and uh, but I enjoy it. And I have taken to calling my uh, my bags dodgy bags, <laughs> and uh, then that became a bit of a hashtag. And I, and um, and Claudia uh, suggested that maybe we could have a dodgy bag make along. So it's going to run from the first of May to the first of June. It's just a month, and it's open to everyone, no matter what your level of sewing expertise. You could be a complete novice beginner, or you could be a super sewing expert uh, and just in those four weeks you make a dodgy bag. I'm going to try and write a blog post on my new and a little bit empty blog um, with some links to some tutorials that I have uh, found so once that is up I will let you all know and yeah like I say I'll start on the 1st of May and the idea is to make a a dodgy bag or several dodgy bags or as many as you can make in that time and enter it into the uh, finished object thread which will be hosted in my Ravelry group and the chatter thread um, will be hosted on Claudia's uh, group and as she announced this make along on her recent podcast as well. Um, hello Claudia <laughs> and uh, she, she's going to host the chatter thread so you can head over there and start chatting about your fabrics or your techniques or uh, how to do what you want to make um, and just start getting excited about it. So that is going to be really fun. So there's going to be lots of new dodgy bags going out into the world. Oh, and prizes. I have got a couple of things. I will probably make a dodgy bag to give away. I might dye some yarn maybe, but I've also got a lovely skein of yarn that I will show you um, when I do the incoming stuff, which will be an excellent thing to give as a prize. And I'll uh, but, but we haven't finished uh, the, the full details yet, but I will, um, uh, I'll be able to talk in more detail about prizes next time. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention, which has now gone out of my head as I'm talking, was Georgie Bag Make Along. Oh yes. Um, I have written, I have written and taken photos and done a very detailed tutorial for my multiplication squares. It's a crochet project of, a, of mul um, and it's a, a type of granny square, which I've called the multiplication square. I don't have them here with me, so I'm going to put a picture on the screen as I'm talking. Uh, and they just reminded me of the multiplication sites. So I called it multiplication squares. I've been making um, lots and lots of them over the past probably about four years with scraps of acrylic yarn and it's about time I brought that all together in one uh, blanket. So I've written a tutorial for the squares and I will press publish on that before I press publish on this video. So if you want to head over there and have a look at that, I am not a pattern writer. Um, if there are any errors or anything doesn't make sense, please feel free to leave a comment on my blog or contact me. I'm very happy to help if I haven't made anything clear. I have taken lots of pictures. So yeah, if I can work out how to then upload an additional PDF as well, we'll be well away. So let me know what you think of that. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next segment from my pile of things. Clearly, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I wrote down cow news, but I've already just covered that, so we don't need to do that. That was the make along. Um, okay. Epos. 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 You can believe me, even if it was blurry. I've got the cutest Epos of all time to show you. It's okay. Everything is cute. 
First of all, for the first time ever, this is a knitted project and a very quick one. Um, I made for the first time some baby socks. They're so tiny. And I made this um, using a free pattern on Ravelry, which because I'm not organized, I have not written down, but fortunately I do have my iPad right in front of me because I knew that I would need to look things up. Unfortunately, my iPad is ancient, needs to be updated and takes about 100 years to do anything. OK, so the name of the pattern is Baby Socks and it's uh, by Kate Atherley. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and that is the that is the pattern picture. And these are my version. I've knit these with minis from Little French Meadow. So I um, I started off um, with, there were 10 gram minis from the Little French Meadow mini skiing club that I uh, belong to. Um, so I started off with one and then when I started to um, only have, when I'd used half of it, when I'd used five grams, I then went into the next mini so that they had a kind of extended um, contrast toe. But because they're both very light colours, they kind of faded quite nicely into each other. And they've got this lovely squeegee um, fold over rib and these are for a friend of mine who has recently had a baby I will not say who just in case she's watching um, and really these socks aren't going to be very practical for the climate where she lives and I do have something a bit more practical to go with it a friend of mine I'm very lucky um, runs her own uh, children's clothing business and uh, I've, I've got her on the case making a lovely little outfit um, so when that arrives, I will pop these in the post to my friend. But how gorgeous is that yarn? And I just did these um, uh, one at a time, actually, Magic Loop, on 2.25 millimetre mini needles. I think I cast on the smallest size, which was 32, because I knit uh, quite loosely. So it will probably be a little bit big for a newborn. And yeah, but she's a, she's a crafter too, so I know she'll appreciate them, even if the, the baby can't wear them that much. So... I can now put those to one side, ready to be posted. And my other super cute finished object is for my eldest daughter's birthday. So we're going to Cornwall to celebrate my mum's 70th, but it is also my eldest daughter's 12th birthday. And uh, every year on their birthdays, my girls choose um, something that they want made for them. Sometimes it's sewing, sometimes it's crocheted. More often than not, they choose some kind of crocheted creature. And my daughter chose um, a creature from this book, which is Zumagrumi 6. I love it. I've got a few of their uh, books. Uh, they've got gorgeous patterns. They are always spot on. I've never found a mistake. And I've used for this Drops Paris, I think, which is a cotton um, worsted weight yarn. I'm sure it was Drops Paris. I think it was. And she wanted a panda. So here he is. I shared this on Instagram. He got a lot of love. So this is Lilia's crocheted panda. I'll just do a little turn around for you. You can see there he put the join of the colour on the back. I'll show you his legs. And the way you attach the arms and legs means that they, uh, they are poseable. You can move them and it means that he can sit down as well. So that's her little Amagurumi, Zumagurumi 6 Panda. And it's a lovely pattern. And um, like I say, it's in the Zumagurumi 6 book. It's called Bo the Panda. And the designer is Smart Apple Creations. It's hard to show you the pattern in the book without giving away half of the pattern. There it is. I'll see if I can show it to you without showing you the pattern. There you go. So yeah, little bow, her own little bow, the panda, and that will be sitting on top of all of her presents on Saturday morning when she uh, comes down the stairs for her birthday. And the next um, finished objects I've got are sewing. They're dodgy bags. So I've been making some dodgy bags, some of which I've already popped in the post to various people that I'm doing swaps with or that I just thought I owed <laughs> a dodgy bag to. So this one's not quite finished. It, well, it is finished. It just needs a drawstring. So I also, the other thing about uh, my dodgy bags is I am not buying fabric for them. For some reason, despite the fact I don't sew much, I've got a big 
uh, laundry, you know, one of those zip up laundry bags um, in my wardrobe full of fabric. At one point I inherited some fabric from my um, uh, husband's step grandmother, complicated. And so I had a lot from there and I've been given fabric from people over the years or I've saved it from say cushions or curtains and things, tablecloths, thinking, you know, hoarding it, thinking one day I'll have a use for it. But I need to use it. I, I can't have this kind of stuff cluttering up my life, but I want to use it. I'm not, some of it I might be able to give away, but on the whole, I just want to use it and make things that are going to make me and other people happy. So that's why I don't often buy funky, lovely, pretty, um, modern sort of yarns that you would normally see because I'm using what I have. So in this instance, I have, um, this is an organic cotton. It actually says organic and it's a cotton flower at the bottom, which I um, had bought years and years ago. The sunshine fabric is my mum's old Christmas tablecloth, which I absolutely love. And it's lined with a gingham fabric, which I had bought the year that my eldest daughter had to be Dorothy from Wizard of Oz in the school play. And I had to make her a little Dorothy dress. So I'm using all that up and I always put a little tag, a little bit of ribbon or, or something like that on the side. Um, I was looking on Etsy the other day about getting maybe some little tags made that say dodgy bag so I can attach them to make them official dodgy bags and if you've got one that means you've got an official <laughs> like a blue peter badge so is it only us in the UK that know what a blue peter badge is I'm not saying that if you have a dodgy bag you're not going to get him free anywhere but I don't know where I'm going with that anyway this is my other um dodgy bag that I made and this is the cute one I might keep this one and be selfish because I really like it so I have this fabric in my uh, laundry bag of fabric and it is a little red riding hood I think it was a fat quarter I bought on eBay years and years and years ago and the mustard yellow is actually from a cushion I found two old cushions in a charity shop year, years and years ago they're like a corduroy mustard and I just bought them with specifically for making bags before back then it wouldn't have been project bags but just little um tote bags you know so i made a little handle um, on one side and the zip is actually the zip from the cushion so i removed the zip from the cushion cut it down to size and we used it and on the inside i just lined it with a plain uh, organic uh, cotton which in white like that and i'm really pleased with this one i'm pleased with how the the zip came out, I, I, I think I did that quite well. I think I might have finally cracked it, touch wood, but not there, because I might knock everything over. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really, really pleased with that. And it's so cute. So I think that might be mine. Is that really selfish? Who cares? It's mine. I made it and I, I'm going to keep it. Okay, so I think that is it for finished object, because I showed you my uh, Puffle puff socks last time, didn't I? I've now given those to my husband and he was delighted. And they have been washed and worn and they're going to make another appearance. Sorry, they've been worn and washed. <laughs> and then they're going to make another appearance in later. So I've got two more left. Incoming! Sorry I'm racing through this at such breakneck speed. It's just I didn't want to leave it weeks and weeks and weeks with no podcast at all. And then I get overwhelmed because I'm like, got too much to talk about and I don't have time. The dishwasher is about to beep. It's making its final rinsing noise and then it's going to beep. Right, incoming. So I've been very fortunate in that I've received some uh, some stuff that I've bought. I've received something someone sent me to try out and I received a parcel as part of a swap. So let's start with the things I bought. Although there is a little extra element in here. Okay, it's finished. Um, Alison, who is Biff Sugar Yarn, Biff Sugar Yarn or Biff Sugar Yarns um, on Etsy and Instagram, has um, caught my eye for some time. Um, I've really enjoyed um, seeing pictures of her yarn on Instagram, stalking her Etsy shop, and then she started a podcast, which I really love, Biff Sugar, all one word, Biff Sugar, the Biff Sugar pod, I'll put it on the screen, 
but you've got to type it in with the Biff Sugar bit, all one word, and then you'll find it. And she was showing off her yarn there as well, and then I couldn't resist it any longer, and I promised myself that I would not buy any more just gloriously pretty single skeins of yarn, but I couldn't help myself, so I did. Especially, and this was partly, well, mainly because of how it looked, but the name, just, that was it, that was the final nail in the coffin. So this is her um, tag, Biff Sugar Yarns, Knit, Dye, Repeat, and um, the yarn is called As You Wish. And that is a reference to one of my favourite films of all time which is The Princess Bride. It's probably the film that I quote most, just randomly. For example, and if you, what, if you, if you love this film, you will know a couple of these. No more rhyming now, I mean it. Anybody want a peanut? <laughs> it's just, if you've not seen The Princess Bride, it's brilliant. Anyway, here's all the details. It is 75, 25. 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon. There we go. It's a really nice, pretty little card. And I'm really, I couldn't believe it. It looked even better when it arrived. And I've saved it in its scheme before I undo it to have a look at it. This is something Lily of Nordic Stitches always does. She always unravels it to show you. And I always think that's really interesting to see how it looks all unraveled. So let's do that. So this is the Biff Sugar As You With as you wish colorway all unraveled <gasps> it's so pretty it's so pretty it's inconceivable i'm such an idiot yeah love it what will it be i wonder a sock head hat might be nice Ooh, a scarf Of some oh that's quite nice isn't it oh yeah it might make a nice cow or something I'm all stuck in it now right got that off okay so that is my first Biff Sugar yarns um I, uh, so I bought that and um lovely Alison offered to send me an extra scheme but um at, and I uh, suggested that maybe if she chose what uh, did I choose it? I can't remember if I chose it, Alison, or if you chose it for me. Um, but she said she would send one so that I could give it away um, in a, in, as a prize or as a giveaway. And um, I wanted to do it because I feel like I get a lot. I get a lot from doing this podcast. I get a lot of things. Um, I feel I get a lot of things sent to me. And um, I, I would like to share a bit more of that with the people that watch and give you an opportunity to win stuff and, sh and share this, the, the stuff I'm discovering. And also to um, talk about the, the these women with and, and men with these small businesses who are doing such a, a good job trying to, to make the, their crafty businesses work. I think it's just so important to support them. So um, again, I don't know where I'm going with that, but you, I hope, hopefully you get my, my meaning. So Alison gave me the, this extra luxurious skein of yarn. This is a 80% uh, superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% uh, nylon. And this has got a name that's also a reference to one of my favourite films of all time. So I'll show you the yarn first and then I will tell you the colourway name. How gorgeous is Now when I opened this I did almost have a moment of I'll just keep it. No one need know. No one need know. <laughs> like, it could just be mine. I don't have to give it away. I could just, you yeah. know. But no. It's called Luck Dragon, which is a reference to Never Ending Story. And it is just the Luck Dragon with his little fur and his pink eyes and. Let's unravel this one as well. I'll ravel it back up nicely. Ready to go. So I'm going to use this as one of the prizes in the dodgy bag make along, which I think is a really special prize. And that's it all unraveled. 
really, really lovely. Really pretty. I love I love pink and green together. I think it's really really nice combination so thank you so much Alison for sending that as an extra um, and for being so um, kind and generous um, your yarn is beautiful and I will be back to get more precious skeins of yarn so I'm just going to keep all those safe in there and she also popped in um, this little badge and I'm going to add this I haven't got a bag really dedicated to putting pins on so I might make myself a plain bag that I can put pins on because I do I do have a little collection I spoke about last time how I found some of the pins that I collected in the 90s as a teenager um, but Alison sent me this little future yarn badge little sheep and uh yeah really really like that so that will go on whatever bag i make to, to house my pin collection thank you alison and go and check out her podcast and her etsy shop biff sugar yarn uh, i also ordered myself some sock blockers and uh in the as of the last podcast they hadn't arrived and about two days later they did and it made my day they came all the way from the ukraine uh they are from ali oh I'm so unprepared for this. I'm going to put the name of it's Alex Workshop something. I'm going to put the name of the shop on uh, the screen now so that you know where I got them from. And you can get them in different wood finishes. Uh, this one is beach because I wanted a light colour. Um, and you can also get them with different shapes uh, cut out. I think you can get stars and uh, other other shapes. Um, you can there's a variety you can choose from and i don't think they're laser cut but they've got a very rounded um edge which i really really liked the idea of because um i didn't want anything that was going to snag and you can see how beautiful they are hello hello <laughs> and i got these in extra enormous because i got them to block socks for my husband who uh, does wear his hand knit socks quite a lot and I've only ever made him two pairs previously and then I made him uh, his Hufflepuff socks for his birthday and had no way of blocking them because they were so enormous so like I say these these were worn on his birthday after he received them all day all around Dover Castle and he was very pleased with them and I've since washed them and then they're going to be packed for Cornwall so and as you can see they fit the ginormous sock blockers perfectly his Hufflepuff socks they've washed up well actually that's quite good and I talked last time I did a garter stitch fish lips kiss hill thinking I was being dreadfully original and then discovered I wasn't really being that original so yours I'm very pleased with those and also because I was paying a bit of postage to get them um, delivered from the Ukraine I thought oh, I just ordered a little extra thing for me and I got one of it's a diddy little sock blocker. Look! It's a teeny tiny sock blocker. I have to make a teeny tiny sock for this. I'm gonna make with the leftover yarn from my baby socks. I've got some of the some of the pink left. I'm gonna make a tiny sock. I can have a whole collection of teeny tiny socks which I can then block on my teeny tiny sock blocker. I just love Maybe next time I'll have a little teeny tiny sock to show you. I'll have to work it out. I mean, it's going to be like cast on, I don't know, 16 stitches or something. Yeah. So that's a lot of fun. I also received a bag and I'm just uh, going to double check the name of the lovely lady. Her name's Michelle. I remembered that much, but I wanted to look up her um, Instagram name. So her Instagram name is pictures in threads and uh, she contacted me via uh, Instagram and said I've been making some bags um, can I send you one just so you can try it out and, and see what you think of it 
So um, I said yes, and in return I will be sending her a dodgy bag from me. So uh, I don't. I, one of them I will. I need. I've got a load cut out, and I need to find the time to sew them all together for various uh, swaps and and things like that. So you will be getting one of those eventually, Michelle. And uh, she sent me a lovely card, and uh, and she sent me a lovely bag to try out. So I haven't tried it out yet because I've been saving it to show you. Oh, and she also sent me some tailors of Harrogate tea and I haven't yet been able to track down where to buy this I know it is available possibly in Morrison's and it's gorgeous it's a really really tasty brand of herbal tea the flavours are really strong really like it and this is the lovely lovely bag she sent me it's got a lot of yellow it's got yellow uh, scissors and look at the bee fabric absolutely love it it's a lovely drawstring and you can i love that you can see the yellow when you do that because she's done um that's very clever actually isn't it i've never done that so it's yellow to match the bottom of the bag but it continues in that fabric on that side very clever and then on the inside it is um li lined with this fabric that looks like pins i sure i might transfer my holiday project into this bag possibly what about oh no I might put my uh, my other socks that I've got on the go which I'm not going to share with you today because I'm not going to go through all my whips it'll take forever um, so thank you Michelle for that I absolutely love it I can't wait to uh, use it and I'm like I said I'm probably going to take that on holiday with me and use it on holiday Michelle doesn't have an Etsy shop yet but if you want to go and have a look at her feed she is pictures in threads on Instagram so thank you Michelle I really love that and the other oh let me just put my she sent me a little card and put that back inside the other incoming thing I got was a swap parcel from lovely Shelley who I've followed on Instagram for a little while while and she is get this right kiki lucy seven on instagram and she contacted me i think before christmas to see if i wanted to do a swap and i only put her swap parcel in the post today but the reason for that was i was I, initially i was delayed because um i was ill so she was very understanding about that and then uh, she wanted to get hold of some yarn that I could get hold of here in the UK. So I had to um, uh, track that down and then I went and got it. So that delayed it as well. But um, Shelley, just so you know, if you're watching, all of your yarn and your swap parcel went in the post today. And I've just spotted that some of the yarn is over there. So I'm just going to go and get it. I've got everything there. I'm not going to go through absolutely everything to show you because it would just take, take a long time. So she sent me some tea and she also sent some uh, little packages with chocolate and stickers in for my girls. And they, Shelley, they felt so special They because they get so excited when I get a parcel through the post. And then I said, oh, look, there's some bits here for you. And it had um, some chocolate, which is um, Smarties, which we get here, but it was packaged differently than, than we get here. So they thought that was just brilliant and some lovely stickers, which they've already been getting creative with uh yeah so she sent me some minis and some tea in a lovely little um sort of tea holding pouch which i shall quickly show you so it opens up and there's tea inside and there's all kinds of lovely looking herbal teas and they're all the kind of um i like all the sort of uh, uh cinnamony spicy flavors and they're all that and look she sent me some David's tea with a little um, little infusy bag thing and I've never had David's tea but I hear loads of podcasters talking about it so I'm very excited about that and I'm going to save it to have on my birthday next month David's tea and she also sent me my own chocolate which is getting nowhere near the kids that is mine 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 and then she sent me four little uh, 25 oh 30 gram balls that's the phone going Whoever it was didn't leave a message, so it can't be that important. Either that or they're going to start trying to call me on my mobile, which I'm filming on, and it's going to... Yeah, that's exactly what just happened. <laughs> it's my husband, so I better hurry up. I'm pretty sure he might just be calling me to tell me that he's on his way home early. 
Today's Thursday, by the way, it's the 29th of March and t tomorrow is the start of the Easter Bank holiday weekend. So he was hoping to leave work early and come and work from home. There's a text message just popped up now. Thanks. Sorry about that. Husband dealt with. So, uh, yes, yeah, so she sent me four 30 gram balls of this. Uh, it's called Crafters Square Knitting Yarn, um, which is very pretty. What's it got in it? It's got wool, nylon and acrylic in it. So, um, and I've got four of those, so that makes 120 grams. So, yeah, I'll have to come up. I think that might be quite nice for a colourful hat or something like that. Um, and she also sent me this really cute little pen. Wacky Woolies pen. It's got sheeps all over it. I know it's not sheeps, I know it's sheep, but sheeps is, sheeps is a fun thing to say. And it's got a sheep at the top. So yeah, I might pop that in my project bag and I will get using it. And she sent me these two super, <laughs> I think these are so funny. Fantastic little ornaments, little future yarn ornaments, which are going to be hung up somewhere about the house. And she she sent me this. It's a scrubby, which I'm now going to go and put straight into use in the kitchen. So I didn't know that you could get yarn that was like, like scrubby yarn. It's like, you know, Scratchy. I don't even know if we can get that here. Amazing. So you can make actual, you know, for doing your pans and things. I'm very excited about this. So she's obviously made that. And a little tree decoration, and that's a knitted one. See, looks quite cool. There. And she sent me this, which I, is a, um, I don't have a mug nearby. I think it's a mug hug that you put around your, your mug. I've got a can of coke. Could I use it on a can of coke? Ah! <laughs> yeah, so it fits on my can of coke, which makes me think it would fit um, when you get a cup of tea from the from Starbucks. <laughs> I might use that as my can of coke holder. And she sent me these cool little scissors, which are pink. Really like these actually. I, you can never have enough scissors. I like to have a little pair in every single um, project that I've got going on because I always need them. And then, last but not least, she sent me um, some yarn from uh, her friend uh, Richard. I'm going to say this wrong. Devries. Devries. Um, she. Uh, he's a Canadian dyer so Shelley's in Canada and she helped him recently with a yarn show that he did he dyes lovely yarn and she said you know when we were talking about what we were going to swap she had her eye on a certain yarn here and I managed to get that and uh, she said I could send you some from this dyer and I said sure you pick for me so she and she did well so <laughs> this one is called banana popsicle and it is a it's a really bright but um, I can't describe it, but soft, not hard yellow, and it is like banana. And uh, my daughter had this over there because she's designed a shawl, <laughs> which I'll share with you next time. And she wants to have this as the border, so that will give me. There's uh, 399 meters in this, so I'll have enough to do the border and still have enough left to make something for me. So that is a uh, uh, super washed. Uh, merino 80% uh, and it's 20% nylon so it would also be good for bright yellow socks so that is beautiful and with it she also sent this one which is called Silver Dawn and it is 100% merino yarn uh, and this is there's 206 meters here so not sure what the weight is I think it looks like a fingering weight so that's the little label. That's the info. And that's the yarn. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. It's got some lovely... I, I, I really like um, blue and orange together. I don't know why. 
went through a bit of a blue and orange phase. It seemed on my Instagram for a period of time last summer, everything seemed to have like blue and orange in it. And I was looking at it thinking, oh, I like that. I like this blue and orange phase I seem to be going through. So yes, thank you, Shelley. That was a really, really fun uh, parcel to receive. I felt very spoiled and your parcel is on the way. Thank you very much. I've only got one more little thing and it's got to be works in progress and plans. Now, obviously I have not brought all of my works in progress, but I have brought with you the couple I wanted to share with you. And that is my, I've just spotted something else that I didn't show, show you in finished objects, but I'll, I'll just stick it in at the end. So living in my bag that is from Hannah, of Hannah from Sheep's Alley, she made me this bag and it's brilliant. It's got all kinds of decoration, including this amazing yellow crocheted mandala. And she made this, we did a swap last year. And in this is my corner to corner moss stitch uh, scrappy blanket. So this is a project that I, um, I was trying to find a new project to use my minis for. And everybody left some wonderful comments um, and loads of suggestions. And one viewer um, suggested the uh, corner to corner moss stitch pattern by Polly Plum, who, who has the blog Every Trick on the Hook. So I started making a scrappy uh, corner to corner moss stitch blanket. And this is how it's looking. And I am loving it. So I just keep working in minis until I'm happy with how much I put in or sometimes I just work them until I've run out of that mini completely and I'm just adding them in as I go. So I've got a little collection of minis in my bag to take away with me so I can just throw some uh, stitches into this on the car journey and I'm really really happy with how this is working out and this yarn here uh, I started with was probably a bit dark compared to the other yarns but I love how it's worked out look it's kind of striped because it was quite close together there it's kind of striped I quite like that and I just like love the way all the colors um, blur into each other because of the that moss stitch it it creates a blur which is really really nice there's a little bump there because I think quite early on I had not quite got into the rhythm of the pattern and I may have increased but that's going to block out so I'm not worried about that. And all my little minis that are going into it, I'm keeping in my little pouch that I got as a gift from Sam of Betsy May at Christmas. So it's a bit Christmassy, but it's keeping all my minis together that are lined up to go in uh, into the blanket. So I've got a couple of little French meadow ones, and then I've got a glorious little collection of minis that I've found from around the place that are gonna go in. Um, whilst we're away. I might I might grab a, another couple as well. The one that I'm putting in at the moment is absolutely gorgeous. This is a mini I picked up at the Waltham Abbey Wool Festival in January. It, it was just a one-off mini that she dyed. Oh, but it's beautiful, the colours. I love this. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that looks. I've only just started to put it in. So that's going in to be, that's off to be packed with everything. And oh, just knock something down. I also have in progress a stitching, um, non-knitty, non non-crochet uh, work in progress, which is living in this, which is my little bag, which I have for years have kept all my embroidery stuff in. I don't embroider, but I have embroidery thread because I used to make and and have taught the girls to make and still do like to make occasionally friendship bracelets you know the woven friendship bracelets that you use embroidery floss for so i've got a lot of stuff and i do have hoops from where i've messed about in the past but then chrissy of chrissy crafts um started an embroidery make along a stitch along and it's called the good intentions sow good intention stitch along and the idea is that you choose a, a a good intention which you then embroider into a hoop and then you do a little decoration around the edge and she's released a series of videos that show you how to do each step and i i would never have thought that i could in any way contemplate even being able to do this and it is testament to her videos that i've even managed to do as far as i've got so just using the colors i had to hand and show you without dropping anything. My phrase is adventure awaits. And that is because we've had a really rough start to 2018. 
it's been dreadful and it just feels like a hopeful saying that there's adventure ahead and then I just I'm up to the part of, I'm doing lazy daisy stitch for all the little tiny petals and I think I'm a couple of steps behind um, so I need to crack on with it the last day of this is tomorrow so I might just take a picture of it today make sure I've, I've got it entered into the stitch along even if I've not managed to finish it what with everything going on but I am delighted look, look at those little roses they were like I think Claudia, Cloche Luna um, podcast was saying that what kind of view do is this? <laughs> How am I making roses out of thread? But once you've done it a couple of times, you realise, oh my goodness, so easy. I just, it's very, very enjoyable. I'm not going to show you the back. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that messy. But you do a thing at the end where you cover up the back anyway, so who's going to know? Who's going to know? No one, just me, because I'm not showing. So that is my Good Intentions uh, hoop, which I am delighted with. So thank you so much, Chrissy of Chrissy Crafts, for starting that, because otherwise I would never have given that a go. Never. So, yeah, very I'm thrilled with that. And finally, I'm just going to show you, it's not a work in progress, it's an about to be work in progress. Um, I am going to be making, on two millimetre needles, a uh, pair of socks and these are going to be my Cornwall socks 2018 I'm going to cast them on in the car on the way there and uh, yeah work on them throughout the holiday but it's self striping set by Down Sheepy Lane it was a gift from my lovely friend Sarah who is Sarah One Daisy and the, col the, the little sock set the colourway is called Sun, S Sun Sea and Shale so straight away, I knew that these were going to be my Cornwall socks. Although I'm not sure we're going to get a lot of sun. I think it's going to be quite cold. And these are living in my lobster bag, which I got for my birthday last year. Perfect. Because near where we go in Cornwall, they have the lobster hatchery in Padsto. And you can go and visit and see all the little baby lobsters being hatched. And there's a, conserv a conservation program for lobsters. And um, I've also got in here all the little bits that came with it, including a little stitch marker and some sweets. So when I uh, cast these on, I'm going to eat the sweets. Now I'll probably get moaned at by everyone else in the car, so I might have to share maybe one or two. So that is my future plan. And the, one, the thing I forgot to show you, because it was over there getting ready to be balled up, is my eldest daughter, if you remember from last time I made the Mary Margaret Tam, uh, my husband and I have become a bit addicted to watching Once Upon a Time, we've never heard of it before, and now we're up to, I think we're just about to end series two. There's so many episodes in a series, my goodness. Uh, but yeah, I think we're at the end of series two. But in series one, there was a, a, a Tam, a uh, hat, uh, like a beret, uh, that one of the characters, Mary Margaret, wore. And I did a quick investigation on Ravelry and found that there was a free pattern that someone had come up with that uh, sort of replicated that hat and I made it and I loved it I love that project so much and I love the resulting hat and my eldest daughter also loves it so much that she's stolen it and keeps wearing my hat so I'm, I'm having to be quite stern and reclaim it but she would like me to make her own one uh, but she was quite specific about the type of colour she wanted and I had some undyed opal yarn that I'd ordered from eBay when I saw it a little while ago that I was saving to dye up and I said well why don't you dye some yarn for it then. So we got all set up and she was a little bit like mm, can't I just go and watch telly <laughs> at first but then once she started to do it and sort of you know you put the yarn in and it just starts to soak up the, the the dye and you see that the water turns clear and she, she just got mesmerized by it so the first skin of yarn she wanted a very light blue so this is the one she did first so we put blue in and it wasn't quite enough and then she added some more blue and then um and then it wasn't really absorbing any more of the dye the uh, water wasn't going clear so we took it out and she was very pleased with this I'm, i hope it's coming out true to color on the screen it's a very electric blue it's very pretty. Uh, so we took it out and she was really pleased with it. And then I said, well, let's put the other skein of yarn in and it can soak up the rest of the dye and you can decide if you want to add some more. So she put the next skein in and it came out this color, kind of dark egg, bluey turquoise. 
And now me at this point would have been speckling it, putting more blue in, putting another color in there and just, you know, just generally messing about. But she was like, nope, that's perfect. I said, do you not want to put any more blue in? Nope. We could speckle on top of it. We could drop blue. Nope. That is the color. She knew when to stop. Unlike me, who would have just kept going and ruined it. She knew she had the perfect colour. So this is the colour she wants for her Mary Margaret tan. And together, they are so pretty. They're quite poofy at the moment because I've just finished drying. So I should have enough. Um, I used a, just over 50 grams, I think almost 55, 60 grams of the last yarn that I used to make the hat. So I'm going to have half of this left. So then I think what I might do is make her a little scarf or a shawl in the two colours with this as a contrast and it will match her hat. So that's the last thing I wanted to show you, share with you. Um, I'm going to try and vlog a bit whilst I'm in Cornwall. Like I say, my personal situation at the moment is very difficult. Uh, we, are, we are taking every day a, a day at a time and we never know what's going to happen. Uh, but I'm going to just keep trying to podcast because I keep making and I keep doing these things because um, I, I know we've all spoken about before um, and we all know this, but it's just about staying sane and it's so good for my mental health to keep making um, and to keep stitching memories into things and to keep making uh, making plans and making things for people I love, making things for me and just enjoying the process. Um, there's no reason for me to stop doing those things and talking about those things just because um, life is a bit sad at the moment. There is still joy to be found in it. So I'm sure there's a Harry Potter expression in there somewhere, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. But um, yeah, so thank you for joining me. I'm sorry I had to race through it so quickly. I hope the projects I showed you were interesting and uh, I will see you after Cornwall, hopefully with lots of fun things to share. Until then, happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy stitching and happy crafting. Bye.